Dravidians are speakers of any of the Dravidian languages. There are around 245 million native speakers of Dravidian languages. They form the majority of the population of South India. Dravidian-speaking people are natively found in India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, the Maldives, and Sri Lanka. The 3rd century BCE onwards saw the development of large Dravidian empires like Shara, Chola, Pandyan, Rashtrakuta, Satavahana, Vijayanagara, Pallava, Chalukya, Hoysala, and smaller kingdoms like I, Alupa, Western Ganga, Eastern Ganga, Kadamba, Kalabra, Andhra Ikshvaku, Vishnukundina, Western Chalukya, Eastern Chalukya, Sena, Kakatiya, Reddy, Mysore. Sore, Jaffna, Travancore, Vinad, Cochin, Kananur, Calicut and the Nayakas. Medieval Tamil guilds and trading organizations like the Ayavol and Manigramam played an important role in the Southeast Asia trade. Traders and religious leaders traveled to Southeast Asia and played an important role in the cultural Indianization of the region. Locally developed scripts such as Grantha and Pallava script induced the development of many native scripts such as Khmer, Javanese Kawi script, Baybayan, and Thai. Dravidian visual art is dominated by stylized temple architecture in major centers, and the production of images of stone and bronze sculptures. The sculptures dating from the Chola period has become notable as a symbol of Hinduism. Topic etymology The Sanskrit word Dravida is used to denote the geographical region of South India. It was coined by Adi Shankara CE to CE when he was questioned as to where he had come from by locals in Mandhata, to which he proclaimed himself to be a Dravida Sisu, with Shishu meaning child or child of and Dravida being a sandy word combining the elements Dravya, meaning water, and Vida, meaning meeting place. Therefore, Dravida could be interpreted as meaning the place where the three waters meet with those three waters being the Indian Ocean, the Arabian Sea, and the Bay of Bengal. Southern Brahmins are known as Pancha Dravida while northern Brahmins are known as Pancha Gauda, denoting geographical region. In Prakrit, words such as Damela, Damata, Damila, and Damila, which later evolved from Tamila, could have been used to denote an ethnic identity. Epigraphic evidence of an ethnic group termed as such is found in ancient India where a number of inscriptions have come to light datable from the 6th to the 5th century BCE mentioning Damela or Damata persons. The Hathagumpha inscription of the Kalinga ruler Karavela refers to A.T. Ra Mira Samgata confederacy of Tamil rulers dated to 150 BCE. It also mentions that the League of Tamil Kingdoms had been in existence for 113 years by that time. In Amaravati in present-day Andhra Pradesh there is an inscription referring to a Damila Vaniya Tamil trader datable to the 3rd century CE. Another inscription of about the same time in Nagarjunakanda seems to refer to a Damila. A third inscription in Kanheri Caves refers to a Damila Garini Tamil householder. In the Buddhist Jataka story known as Akiti Jataka there is a mention to Damila Ratha Tamil dynasty. Thamilar is etymologically related to Tamil, the language spoken by Tamil people. Southworth suggests that the name comes from Tam is greater than Tam is self-speak, or one's own speech. Zavelabil suggests an etymology of Tam is, with Tam meaning self or one's self, and is having the connotation of unfolding sound. Alternatively, he suggests a derivation of Tam is the proper process of speaking. The term Thamilar was likely derived from the name of the ancient people Dravida, Dramila, Damila, Tamila, Tamilar, while the English word Dravidian was first employed by Robert Caldwell in his book of comparative Dravidian grammar based on the usage of the Sanskrit word Dravida in the work Tantravartika by Kumarila Bhatta. The word Dravida in Sanskrit has been historically used to denote geographical regions of southern India as whole. Some theories concern the direction of derivation between Tamas and Dravida, such linguists as Zavelabil assert that the direction is from Tamas to Dravida. The modern word Dravidian is devoid of any ethnic significance, and is only used to classify a linguistic family of the referred group. <inaudible> <inaudible> origins The origins of the Dravidians are a very complex subject of research and debate. They may have been indigenous to the Indian subcontinent, but origins in, or influence from, West Asia have also been proposed. According to Narasimhan et al., 2018, Dravidians have a mixture of origins, archaic ancestral South Asians, descended from the first migrants out of Africa who are not related to any group outside of the Indian subcontinent. Another group are Neolithic farmers from Iran. 
These farmers brought agriculture to the Indian subcontinent, but are distinct from the later Indo Aryan migrations. Although in modern times speakers of various Dravidian languages have mainly occupied the southern portion of India, Dravidian speakers must have been widespread throughout the Indian subcontinent before the Indo Aryan migration into the subcontinent. According to Carol Davies, Many academic researchers have attempted to connect the Dravidians with the remnants of the Great Indus Valley Civilization, located in northwestern India. Most noteworthy Asko Parpola, who did extensive research on the IVC scripts. The Brawi population of Baluchistan in Pakistan has been taken by some as the linguistic equivalent of a relict population, perhaps indicating that Dravidian languages were formerly much more widespread and were supplanted by the incoming Indo Aryan languages. The Dravidian influence is also noted to have been found in ancient civilizations of India. The ancient Dravidians are considered to be the direct ancestors of the Tamils, Malayalis, Telugus, Kannadigas that make up around 20% of India's population. Ancestral components Reich et al. 2009 discerned two major ancestral components in India, namely the ancestral North Indians Ani who are "...genetically close to Middle Easterners, Central Asians, and Europeans," and the ancestral South Indians Asi, which are clearly distinct from Ani and "...not closely related to groups outside the subcontinent." Basu et al. 2016, discerned two additional components, ancestral Tibeto-Burmese and ancestral Austro-Asiatic noting that the Asi and the AAA were early settlers of India who differentiated after their arrival in India. The Ani and Asi mixed in India between 4,200 and 1,900 years ago 2200 BCE to 100 CE, where after a shift to endogamy took place, possibly by the enforcement of social values and norms by the hindu gupta rulers northern indians and higher castes are more related to west eurasians while southern indians and lower castes are less related to west eurasians more johnny et al 2013 described three scenarios regarding the bringing together of the two groups migrations before the development of agriculture 8000 to 9000 years before present bp Migration of Western Asian people together with the spread of agriculture, maybe up to 4,600 years BP. Migrations of Western Eurasians from 3,000 to 4,000 years BP. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Proposed agricultural origins. According to Gallego Romero et al. 2011, their research on lactose tolerance in India suggests that. The West Eurasian genetic contribution identified by Reich et al. 2009 principally reflects gene flow from Iran and the Middle East. Gallego Romero notes that Indians who are lactose tolerant show a genetic pattern regarding this tolerance, which is characteristic of the common European mutation. According to Romero, this suggests that the most common lactose tolerance mutation made a two-way migration out of the Middle East less than 10,000 years ago. While the mutation spread across Europe, another explorer must have brought the mutation eastward to India, likely travelling along the coast of the Persian Gulf where other pockets of the same mutation have been found. Asko Parpola, who regards the Harappans to have been Dravidian, notes that Mergar 7000 BCE to C. 2500 BCE, to the west of the Indus River Valley, is a precursor of the Indus Valley Civilization, whose inhabitants migrated into the Indus Valley and became the Indus Valley Civilization. It is one of the earliest sites with evidence of farming and herding in South Asia. According to Luckix and Hempel, while there is a strong continuity between the Neolithic and Chalcolithic Copper Age cultures of Mergar, dental evidence shows that the Chalcolithic population did not descend from the Neolithic population of Mergar, which suggests moderate levels of gene flow." They further noted that, "...the direct lineal descendants of the Neolithic inhabitants of Mergar are to be found to the south and the east of Mergar, in northwestern India and the western edge of the Deccan Plateau," with Neolithic Mergar showing greater affinity with Chalcolithic Inamgayan, south of Mergar, than with Chalcolithic Mergar. Narasimhan et al. conclude that Ani and Asi were formed in the 2nd millennium BCE. 
They were preceded by a mixture of AASI ancient ancestral South Indians, that is, hunter-gatherers, and Iranian agriculturalists who arrived in India at ca. 4700-3000 BCE, and must have reached the Indus Valley by the 4th millennium BCE. According to Narasimhan et al., this population, which probably was native to the Indus Valley civilization, contributed in large proportions to both the Ani and Asi, which took shape during the 2nd millennium BCE. Ani formed out of a mixture of Indus underscore periphery related groups and migrants from the steppe, while Asi was formed out of Indus underscore periphery related groups who moved south and mixed with hunter gatherers. History <inaudible> <inaudible> Indus Valley Civilization <inaudible> Dravidian identification The Indus Valley Civilization 2600 to 1900 BCE located in northwestern Indian subcontinent is sometimes identified as having been Dravidian. Cultural and linguistic similarities have been cited by researchers Henry Harris, Camille Zavelabile, Asko Parpola and Iravatha Mahadevan as being strong evidence for a proto-Dravidian origin of the ancient Indus Valley Civilization. The discovery in Tamil Nadu of a late Neolithic early 2nd millennium BCE, i.e. post-dating Harappan decline stone Celt allegedly marked with Indus signs has been considered by some to be significant for the Dravidian identification. Yuri Norozov surmised that the symbols represent a logosyllabic script and suggested, based on computer analysis, an underlying agglutinative Dravidian language as the most likely candidate for the underlying language. Norozov's suggestion was preceded by the work of Henry Harris, who suggested several readings of signs based on a Proto Dravidian assumption. Linguist Asko Parpola writes that the Indus script and Harappan language are most likely to have belonged to the Dravidian family. Parpola led a Finnish team in investigating the inscriptions using computer analysis. Based on a Proto Dravidian assumption, they proposed readings of many signs, some agreeing with the suggested readings of Harris and Norozov, such as equating the fish sign with the Dravidian word for fish min but disagreeing on several other readings a comprehensive description of Parpola's work until 1994 is given in his book deciphering the Indus script topic <laughs> <laughs> decline migration and Dravidianization Paleoclimatologists believe the fall of the Indus Valley Civilization and eastward migration during the late Harappan period was due to climate change in the region, with a 200-year-long drought being the major factor. The Indus Valley Civilization seemed to slowly lose their urban cohesion, and their cities were gradually abandoned during the late Harappan period, followed by eastward migrations before the Indo-Aryan migration into the Indian subcontinent. The process of post-Harappan Dravidian influences on southern India has tentatively been called Dravidianization, and is reflected in the post Harappan mixture of IVC and ancient ancestral South Indian people. <laughs> Dravidian and Indo Aryan interactions The Dravidian language influenced the Indo Aryan languages. Dravidian languages show extensive lexical vocabulary borrowing, but only a few traits of structural either phonological or grammatical borrowing from Indo-Aryan, whereas Indo-Aryan shows more structural than lexical borrowings from the Dravidian languages. Many of these features are already present in the oldest known Indo-Aryan language, the language of the Rigveda c. 1500 BCE, which also includes over a dozen words borrowed from Dravidian. The linguistic evidence for Dravidian impact grows increasingly strong as we move from the Samhitas down through the later Vedic works and into the classical post-Vedic literature. This represents an early religious and cultural fusion or synthesis between ancient Dravidians and Indo-Aryans. According to Mallory, there are an estimated 30 to 40 Dravidian loanwords in Rig Veda. Some of those for which Dravidian etymologies are certain include Kulaya Kulaya, nest, Kulfa Kulfa, ankle. Danda Danda, stick, Kula Kula, slope, Bila Bila, hollow, Kala Kala, threshing floor, 
While J. Bloch and M. Witzel believe that the Indo Aryans moved into an already Dravidian speaking area after the oldest parts of the Rig Veda were already composed, according to Thomason and Kaufman, there is strong evidence that Dravidian influenced Indic through shift, that is, native Dravidian speakers learning and adopting Indic languages. According to Erdosi, the most plausible explanation for the presence of Dravidian structural features in Old Indo-Aryan is that the majority of early Old Indo-Aryan speakers had a Dravidian mother tongue which they gradually abandoned. Erdosi, 1995-18, even though the innovative traits in Indic could be explained by multiple internal explanations, early Dravidian influence is the only explanation that can account for all of the innovations at once. Early Dravidian influence accounts for several of the innovative traits in Indic better than any internal explanation that has been proposed. According to Zavelabil, several scholars have demonstrated that pre-Indo-Aryan and pre-Dravidian bilingualism in India provided conditions for the far-reaching influence of Dravidian on the Indo-Aryan tongues in the spheres of phonology, syntax and vocabulary. Sanskritization. With the rise of the Kuru kingdom a process of Sanskritization started which influenced all of India, with the populations of the north of the Indian subcontinent predominantly speaking the Indo-Aryan languages. <laughs> Dravidian culture Language <laughs> 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 The most commonly spoken Dravidian languages are Tamil, Tamil Telugu, Telugu Kannada, Kannada Malayalam, Malayalam Brawi, Brahi Tulu, Tulu Gandhi and Korg. There are three subgroups within the Dravidian language family, North Dravidian, Central Dravidian, and South Dravidian, matching for the most part the corresponding regions in the Indian subcontinent. Dravidian grammatical impact on the structure and syntax of Indo-Aryan languages is considered far greater than the Indo-Aryan grammatical impact on Dravidian. Some linguists explain this anomaly by arguing that Middle Indo-Aryan and New Indo-Aryan were built on a Dravidian substratum. There are also hundreds of Dravidian loanwords in Indo-Aryan languages, and vice versa. According to David McAlpin and his Alamo Dravidian hypothesis, the Dravidian languages were brought to India by immigration into India from Elam, located in present-day southwestern Iran. In the 1990s, Renfrew and Cavalli Sforza have also argued that Proto Dravidian was brought to India by farmers from the Iranian part of the Fertile Crescent, but more recently Hegarty and Renfrew noted that, McAlpin's analysis of the language data, and thus his claims, remain far from orthodoxy, adding that Fuller finds no relation of Dravidian language with other languages, and thus assumes it to be native to India. Renfrew and Bonn conclude that several scenarios are compatible with the data, and that the linguistic jury is still very much out. As a proto language, the Proto Dravidian language is not itself attested in the historical record. Its modern conception is based solely on reconstruction. It is suggested that the language was spoken in the 4th millennium BCE, and started disintegrating into various branches around 3rd millennium BCE. According to Krishnamurti, Proto Dravidian may have been spoken in the Indus civilization, suggesting a tentative date of Proto-Dravidian around the early part of the 3rd millennium." Krishnamurti further states that South Dravidian I including pre and South Dravidian II including pre split around the 11th century BCE, with the other major branches splitting off at around the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Religious belief Ancient Dravidian religion constituted of a non-Vedic form of Hinduism in that they were either historically or are at present Agamic. The Agamas are non-Vedic in origin and have been dated either as post-Vedic texts or as pre-Vedic compositions. The Agamas are a collection of Tamil and Sanskrit scriptures chiefly constituting the methods of temple construction and creation of murti, worship means of deities, philosophical doctrines, meditative practices, attainment of sixfold desires and four kinds of yoga. The worship of tutelary deities, sacred flora and fauna in Hinduism is also recognized as a survival of the pre-Vedic Dravidian religion. 
Dravidian linguistic influence on early Vedic religion is evident, many of these features are already present in the oldest known Indo-Aryan language, the language of the Rigveda c. 1500 BCE, which also includes over a dozen words borrowed from Dravidian. The linguistic evidence for Dravidian impact grows increasingly strong as we move from the Samhitas down through the later Vedic works and into the classical post-Vedic literature. This represents an early religious and cultural fusion or synthesis between ancient Dravidians and Indo-Aryans that went on to influence and shape Hinduism, Sramana, Jainism, Buddhism, Charvaka, and Ahivika. Ancient Tamil grammatical works Tolkapiyam, the ten anthologies Patupattu, and the eight anthologies Editokai shed light on early ancient Dravidian religion. Sayyan was glorified as the red god seated on the blue peacock, who is ever young and resplendent, as the favoured god of the Tamils. Savan was also seen as the supreme god. Early iconography of Sayyan and Savan and their association with native flora and fauna goes back to the Indus Valley civilization. The Sangam landscape was classified into five categories, thinne, based on the mood, the season and the land. Tolkapiyam mentions that each of these Thanai had an associated deity such as Sayyan in Karinji the hills, Tirumal in Mulai the forests, and Kotravai in Marutham the plains, and Wanji Ko in the Neethal the coasts and the seas. Other gods mentioned were Mayan and Vali who are all major deities in Hinduism today. This represents an early religious and cultural fusion or synthesis between ancient Dravidians and Indo-Aryans, which became more evident over time with sacred iconography, traditions, philosophy, flora and fauna that went on to influence and shape Indian civilization. Throughout Tamilakam, a king was considered to be divine by nature and possessed religious significance. The king was the representative of God on earth and lived in a coil, which means the residence of a god. The modern Tamil word for temple is coil Tamil. Ritual worship was also given to kings. Modern words for god like ko, Tamil, king, arai, arai, emperor, and andavar, antavan, conqueror, now primarily refer to gods. These elements were incorporated later into Hinduism like the legendary marriage of Shiva to Queen Manachi who ruled Madurai or Wanji Ko, a god who later merged into Indra. Tolkapiyar refers to the three crowned kings as the three glorified by heaven, Tamil, Vanpukal Muvar Vanpukal Muvar. In the Dravidian-speaking South, the concept of divine kingship led to the assumption of major roles by state and temple. The cult of the mother goddess is treated as an indication of a society which venerated femininity. This mother goddess was conceived as a virgin, one who has given birth to all and one, and were typically associated with Shaktism. The temples of the Sangam days, mainly of Madurai, seem to have had priestesses to the deity, which also appear predominantly a goddess. In the Sangam literature, there is an elaborate description of the rites performed by the Kaurava priestess in the shrine Palamaturchalai. Among the early Dravidians the practice of erecting memorial stones Natukal and Viragal had appeared, and it continued for quite a long time after the Sangam age, down to about the 16th century. It was customary for people who sought victory in war to worship these hero stones to bless them with victory. Topic: <laughs> Architecture and Visual Art. Throughout Tamilakam, a king was considered to be divine by nature and possessed religious significance. The king was the representative of God on earth and lived in a coil, which means the residence of a god. The modern Tamil word for temple is koil Tamil. Titual worship was also given to kings. Modern words for god like ko Tamil king arai arai emperor and andavar antavan conqueror now primarily refer to gods. Tolkapiyar refers to the three crowned kings as the three glorified by heaven. Tamil Vanpukal Muvar Vanpukal Muvar in the Dravidian-speaking South, the concept of divine kingship led to the assumption of major roles by state and temple, Mayamata and Manasara Shilpa texts estimated to be in circulation by the 5th to 7th century AD, are guidebooks on the Dravidian style of Vastu Shastra design, construction, sculpture and joinery technique. Isanasavagarudeva Padhati is another text from the 9th century describing the art of building in India in South and Central India. In North India, Brihat Samhita by Varahamahira is the widely cited ancient Sanskrit manual from the 6th century describing the design and construction of Nagara style of Hindu temples. 
Traditional Dravidian architecture and symbolism are also based on Agamas. The Agamas are non-Vedic in origin and have been dated either as post-Vedic texts or as pre-Vedic compositions. The Agamas are a collection of Tamil and Sanskrit scriptures chiefly constituting the methods of temple construction and creation of murti, worship means of deities, philosophical doctrines, meditative practices, attainment of sixfold desires and four kinds of yoga. Chola style temples consist almost invariably of the three following parts, arranged in differing manners, but differing in themselves only according to the age in which they were executed. The porches or mantapas, which always cover and precede the door leading to the cell. Gate pyramids, gopuras, which are the principal features in the quadrangular enclosures that surround the more notable temples. Gopuras are very common in Dravidian temples. Pillared halls or are used for many purposes and are the invariable accompaniments of these temples. Besides these, a South Indian temple usually has a tank called the Kalyani or Pushkarni, to be used for sacred purposes or the convenience of the priests. Dwellings for all the grades of the priesthood are attached to it, and other buildings for state or convenience. Theatre, dance, and music Literary evidence of traditional form of theatre, dance and music dates back to the 3rd century BCE. Ancient literary works, such as the Salapadikaram, describe a system of music. The theatrical culture flourished during the early Sangam age. Theatre dance traditions have a long and varied history whose origins can be traced back almost two millennia to dance theatre forms like Kotukoti and Pandurangam, which are mentioned in an ancient anthology of poems entitled the Kalingathu Purani. Dance forms such as Bharatanatyam are based older temple dance forms known as Kater Kacheri as practiced by courtesans and a class of women known as Devadasis. Carnatic music originated in the Dravidian region. With the growing influence of Persian and Sufi music on Indian music, a clear distinction in style appeared from the 12th century onwards. Many literary works were composed in Carnatic style and it soon spread wide in the Dravidian regions. The most notable Carnatic musician is Parandara Dasa who lived in the court of Krishnadevaraya of the Vijayanagara Empire. He formulated the basic structure of Carnatic music and is regarded as the Patamaha lit. Father, or the grandfather of Carnatic music. Kanakadasa is another notable Carnatic musician who was Parandaradasa's contemporary. Each of the major Dravidian languages has its own film industry like Kaliwood Tamil, Tollywood Telugu, Sandalwood Kannada, Mollywood Malayalam. Kaliwood and Tollywood produce most films in India. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Costume Dravidian speakers in southern India wear varied traditional costumes depending on their region, largely influenced by local customs and traditions. <laughs> Martial arts and sports In Mahabharatha was mentioned, that Bhishma claimed that southerns are skilled with sword fighting in general and Sahadeva was chosen for the conquest of the southern kingdoms, because of his swordsman skills. In South India various types of martial arts are practiced like Kalaripayatu and Salambam. It is speculated that Bodhidharma was a 6th century Pallava prince, who became a Buddhist monk, although the credibility of the same is debatable. In ancient times there were fights and comp public duels to the death, to solve disputes between his opposing rules. Among some communities, young girls received preliminary training up until the onset of menses. In Vidakan Padakal ballads, at least a few women warriors continued to practice and achieved a high degree of expertise. Sports like Kambala, Jalikatu, Kabadi, Valam Kali, Lambs and Tigers, Maramadi are parts of Dravidian culture. <laughs> Traditional weapons Weapons used in Kalaripayatu Ethnic groups The largest Dravidian ethnic groups are the Telugus from Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, the Tamils from Tamil Nadu, Sri Lanka, Malaysia and Singapore, the Kanadigas from Karnataka, the Malayalis from Kerala, and the Tulu people from Karnataka. Certain communities of Marathis from Maharashtra are considered as Scytho Dravidians. 
Topic: <laughs> List of Dravidian people based on population. Topic: <laughs> See also. Dravidian languages. Dravidian University, dedicated to research and learning of Dravidian languages. Equals equals notes. <laughs>